rubber masks, air filters, and audio speakers. These are just some of the components that make up the air crew eye and respiratory protection system and is designed to keep air crews safe even at high altitudes. So the equipment is very complex. I would say that's probably going to be one of the weaknesses of this exercise, the amount of equipment and connecting it all and putting it all on. Connecting all these parts and making sure it is operational can be a grueling process. All right, boys. See you in an hour. Uh, if you were to ask any air crew member, we'd, uh, we'd say it's a pain to have to wear this stuff. I mean, this is for that really bad day uh, when uh, chemical weapons are involved, dirty bombs, something like that. Um, and you hope maybe you have to wear it. It's only for a short period of time. Uh, but we, we all understand the, the value of it. For the first time in over a decade, Charleston Air Crews tested their ERPS gear, which means for most of them, this is their first exposure to the challenges of wearing it. That, can we pull up on it and fix it? Uh, but when you have to wear a piece of equipment uh, that limits your basic human abilities, whether that be to move, to breathe, to communicate, uh, that really dials your situational awareness back. Knowing how ERPS gear changes in-flight operations, from adjusting flight calculations to dropping cargo, helps identify what information needs to be relayed to other crews for next time. Find those weaknesses and fix them. So when this, when we do get called up, we don't have to go through this, and we know exactly. Hey, I struggled with this. You know, this was difficult. Communication, drinking water. You know, I got, I got hot. I got tired. I had to go to the bathroom. Whatever it is, and this is how I fixed it. And so crews can be prepared to successfully execute the mission. Executing the mission while being able to enter hazardous zones effectively. Reporting from Joint Base Charleston, South Carolina, I'm Staff Sergeant Brian Grotz.